Let me just start by saying I recommend this game. If you like survival builders, you'll probably like this one. Um, this one actually has three genres it dips its toes into. Survival, building, and strategy management. All of those kind of share some DNA, but I want to make sure that everyone's aware of that because it's not like... <clears throat> Well, honestly, it's not like quite a few other games I can mention. If you want the closest comparison, you're probably looking at something like RimWorld. You really do need to maintain your people. They can be replaced, but doing so is painful, and it's pretty easy for them to die. And it's extremely easy for things to cascade into total failure. In actuality, the game I would most relate this to is Dwarf Fortress, which either you've heard of before or and, and are part of this genre, or are the kind of person who probably isn't into this kind of game in general. Having said all of that, before I just heap praise upon this game left and right, let me just say, let's talk about the story. Okay, we're done talking about the story. I find it interesting that they bothered to have a narrative thread here, and it was even kind of interesting, but the fact that it was tacked on after they'd already designed the gameplay really shows. I don't know for total certainty, but it actually makes me wonder if they legitimately had no story ideas whatsoever, and it was just supposed to be just gameplay and nothing else. And then they were like, well, let's add something. And so they added like the little events over time after the fact, because they are so intermittent. I think we had a grand total of, I think, six story events in the entire playthrough across, across about a week. That's that's not a lot of story. It's not a lot of density. It's probably the exact same problems a lot of people had, including me, with Breath of the Wild. So that sucks. But I do want to talk about how much I was enjoying this game because I want you to understand why I got so angry at it. Hear me out for a second. So we have survival mechanics. Those include food, air, and water. That also includes power. Remember that for later. Uh, food is something that you can kind of solve as a problem as long as you have power. And water is the kind of thing you can kind of solve as long as you have power. Uh, oxygen is the kind of thing that you're going to be managing for quite a while because pressure and other gases are always going to be an issue and at a certain point you're going to run out of algae. In fact, oxygen kind of comes directly from algae and power. So if you don't actually have the algae, well then you're screwed, right? Because you don't have a source of oxygen. Most maps start with a little bit of oxalite unless you're starting on a challenge map, in which case you're screwed. And if you have no algae, then you're probably also screwed. Now, there are other, other sources of oxygen you can upgrade to, but that's further down the tech tree, which requires power. So being able to get all of that and managing all of that is brilliant. I in no way want to say this like a bragging statement, but this game clicked for me so quickly and intuitively, which is really, really good. Because the first major complaint I have about the game is the fact that its tutorialization and lack thereof is awful. This is a wiki game, but it's worse than most wiki games I've ever seen. In fact, this might actually be the worst wiki game we have ever reviewed. Nothing of worth is explained in the actual in-game tutorials. There are comments and discussions about certain things occasionally in the, in the searchable uh, in-game wiki that you can find, but even those don't necessarily give you all the information, for example, what some of those statistics and numbers actually mean. Now, pretty much all the info is in the game, credit where credit is due, but sometimes finding it is a little bit troublesome, and again, the game just does not explain its mechanics at all. So if you don't understand things like pressure or physics or electrical grids or anything like that in real life, sucks to be you because nothing explains any of that. Now, I deliberately went out of my way to play this as blind as possible, which is why I mentioned the intuitive thing and the tutorial thing. Because if you kind of catch on, you're good, and you can keep ahead of the, the rising tide of non-stop cascading problems and try to avoid systemic failure. Because the moment you hit systemic failure and hit critical mass, you're probably done. The game is also designed to be restarted over and over and over again. I've given my thoughts on that many times. I will not repeat them here. All I will say is that I managed to do one solid playthrough well up into day 100, and I was doing pretty solidly, but there was an issue that was bothering me for real life days that I kept running into. And that issue was I was having so much fun, except I kept coming up with solutions to problems that I couldn't do. Um, you know, I, as we kept expanding, we started exploring, we started digging into other biomes, we figured out how abyssalite works. Uh, we started dealing into temperature. Uh, we had we had the great fortune of having several cold biomes nearby to help regulate the temperature. That was cool. No pun intended. We figured out how to desalinize the water so we could turn polluted water into clean water, pretty much solving that problem, although that had its own issues. And we just we kind of started getting ahead. We, we spent 
something like seven hours solving the CO2 problem by building the Comcast pipe. All of this probably means nonsense to those of you who aren't there for the stream, but that's fine. Um, but once the Comcast pipe was done, we solved the CO2 problem, but we also sort of introduced a pressure problem because we were pumping huge amounts of gas out of the biome, which is, is understandable. So then we just sealed off the pipe and then started rebuilding it with oxygen. But we kept running into the same problem everywhere. Now I'm going to pause right here because I want to mention that I was having a very good time with this game. It scored very well. It deserved to score very well. It's one of the better builder management survival games I have ever seen. But I'll probably never play it again. Because I have one colossally huge issue with it. And it's an issue that affects the entire game. And if you've been paying any kind of attention, you already know what it is. Power. Everything in the game relies on power. You need electricity in order to do anything. Every single mechanism that you have access to, every tech, every research, every new everything relies on having power underneath that in order to power the devices necessary to accomplish that objective, in order to try and use the tools at your disposal. Now that makes sense, that's kind of real life, but the power systems in this game are not what I would call good. And what's really frustrating about it is it's actually kind of a combination of... <sighs> maybe about six or so different problems. I'm actually not gonna give you the full rant because that's what the stream is for. But it was really, really, really frustrating. I, I, I stopped playing the game for a bit, took a moment, took a breather, you know, got away from my frustrations, sat down, actually got out a piece of paper, started mapping out my grid, started mapping out what, amp, uh, what wattage needed to go where and what transformers and what batteries needed to go where. Decided to Google it and found out that the system didn't work the way I thought it did. There's that tutorialization problem again. But the problem is it worked worse than I thought it did. Twice. Now, you could argue that that's the way it should work, and that's debatable. But in my opinion, the way the power system and its many issues kind of interact with each other is not only frustrating and irritating in its own right, but, and this is much more importantly, because it is the underpinning of everything else in the game, I stopped having fun with the game in general. I reached a point where I wanted to put the game down rather than keep playing it because of the power issue, because the power issue affects everything. I hate to keep emphasizing this point, but this is, I, I, don't, I don't know how to put this, this is, imagine there's a thing in like an RPG where every combat round someone just punches you in the dick or the neck or the eyeball, just, just poke every single combat every single time it's such a non-stop issue it leaves rock and shoe status and goes more into like like chinese water torture if each generator generated more power this might not have been as much of an issue if the game actually properly tutorialized its automation system this might have been an easier to manage issue if the batteries in the game weren't as garbage as they were, this might have been easier to manage. If the way they designed the wiring, both in terms of physical placement and in terms of throughput, was not as irritating as it was, this might have done, not have been as much of an issue. If the sources of power, the actual things you can use in order to generate power, were more prolific or less irritating to procure, this might not have been as irritating. And you see what I mean when I say it's lots of different steps that all light up into power. If I can use an analogy, I mentioned Zelda Breath of the Wild earlier. I don't like the durability in that game. But to say I don't like the durability implies that I have one issue with it, which is not true. The problem with the durability in that game is it's more like five separate issues, all of which combine into making the durability so irritating. I'm not going to give the whole spiel here, but you get the idea. Conjoined, connected game systems can have an impact on every other connected system with them. So the wiring and the source of the power and the generators themselves, and the draw, and the fact that it's necessary for everything. All of these issues, oh, actually, sorry, there's actually a sixth one, because the resources necessary to even make the wires and the generators uh, is not super prolific. And we started just straight up running dry, trying to keep ahead of everything else. So there's our six issues. Six issues, all of which made each other issue worse, until it got to the point where I wasn't having fun. And I still recommend this game, um, uh, I mentioned I'll never play it again. That's because near as I can tell, there's no mods to fix this. There's, which is really funny to me. 
Um, this feels exactly like what happens in games, especially games that are as mod friendly as this game, which is which this game is very mod friendly. Uh, usually, we all have that, right? Like, there's that one thing that just pisses you off because it's such an irritant or because it's so prolific of a problem. And it's like, well, I'm just going to mod that out. Boom. Game enjoyed. No problem, right? But I can't find a mod to fix this issue. So, I would always have to deal with the problem issues, all six of them. And that's just not fun. And the further you get into the game, the less fun it is, as I showed. It was like three solid days of just this slow descent into madness as I'm trying to solve every other problem. And I can't. Because power. I didn't mean that to sound as allegorical for real life as it, as it, as it does. But either way... <laughs> it's such a shame, because this is really a really very, very good game. I, I have not seen interface and HUD design this good in a long time. I know that sounds like a weird thing to praise, but I think that's just because most people don't even touch on that kind of a thing. The ability to cross-reference and to track individual resources and to tell what does what and where and how at a glance, too. Good visual distinction, good mouse server design, good uh, referencing within building. Like, you go to build something and it tells you exactly how many resources of which you have right there. The fact that it just tracks all the resources in your base perfectly, the fact that you have the priority system to control people, the fact that it's got, like, there's wonderful interlocking for most of the systems that aren't power. So the way that food leads into water, leads into air, leads into food is actually a nice circle. Or more like a, a Mobius loop, but, but you get the point. This is a really, 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 really good game. So I still highly recommend it. And I look forward to hearing the comments about this one. Next up, what are we playing next? Um, Wargroove. That's a game I've been looking forward to for a while. I've been on the list for like three years, so this should be fun. Either way, I'll see you next time.